Let's talk about hydration, what it is, and the history of how we got there. So let's go back in the past. The way we used to build websites in the past is we used some kind of a backend rendering technology, PHP, Rails, Java, or, or many other technologies we had. And this approach is actually very performant because the HTML the browser gets, browsers are extremely optimized to render HTML, and so instantly we would see what we want. The startup performance was actually great. Now, the problem was that we didn't really have interactivity, and so we added technologies such as jQuery. And using jQuery, we could add the little bit of interactivity, and as long as the amount of interactivity on the page was not overwhelming, this was actually a very performant solution. Now, the problem with this solution is that the development is very error-prone, and it creates duplicate logic. Because let's say you have you want to have a form and you want to validate the fields, you have to do validation on both server side and client side. Also, the form probably has like multiple phone numbers and then every time you add a new phone number, you need to know how to render the phone number both on a server and on a client. And so this was not the best developer experience. And so the, currently the technology we use is we really focus on development experience. And so the most popular frameworks, whether it's Angular, Vue, Svalde, React, or many others that exist today, kind of work the same exact way. And what they do is they give us a really unified model and really fast development that scales in complexity. And so this is primarily the reason we wanna use them is because easy and consistent mental model. And really the, the value add is that there is just one language that we have to worry about. But the problem is that the application ends up running twice. And I will kind of show you what I mean by that. Because of that, they all use essentially hydration. And as a result, they don't have the best startup performance. So let's kind of look into it a little more in depth what we mean by that. So you start with HTML, the typical single page application, you start with a simple HTML and it renders really nothing, just a blank page. The page contains information about how to download JavaScript, how to execute the JavaScript, and then finally the framework kicks in and does the rendering of it and produces the page that you actually want. And this is the point where you are interactive. Now, the problem is that over time, we, as we've added more and more JavaScript, we realized that this, this white page became super, super long in terms of duration, especially on mobile devices and slow networks. So we decided to start doing pre-rendering. And so in pre-rendering world, the HTML we send is actually bigger, so it takes longer to send. And we immediately show the, the website to the user. Now, at this point, the, the website is inert. You cannot click on it. And so the, the page appears faster, but actually it's not interactive. The next step is we download the same exact JavaScript, we execute it in the same exact way, and we do the same exact rendering, which essentially just takes the DOM that was created by the HTML, throws it away, and replaces it with the DOM created by the JavaScript. So in that sense, the steps over here are identical to the steps above. And now this UI is interactive. But there's a couple of things to notice. First of all, notice that we are actually slower, not faster. If we would have skipped, we would have sent a blank HTML here, we would actually be faster in the, in the point where we are interactive. And the reason why we're now slower is because we're actually sending duplicate information. This HTML contains your application in the render state, and this JavaScript contains the application in, well, JavaScript form of execution. So to improve on this particular thing, one of the things people started to doing is changing the way the rendering happens, and we changed it to essentially something we call reconciliation. And the reconciliation is the same exact thing as rendering, except that instead of throwing away the DOM created by the HTML, the reconciliation is trying to reuse the DOM nodes that existed as part of the HTML. And so this makes the, this slightly better performance, but also gives a better user experience. So this particular workaround is what we call hydration, right? Is we send a static HTML of pre-rendered on a server. We send the JavaScript and, and execute the code. And then we do reconciliation, which is, is essentially is just rendering that is trying to reuse nodes. And we end up with the page that can be interacted. So how does this compare to resumability? So let's again, look at the normal way the pages work and let's see how resumability is different. So first of all, we send HTML as before, like nothing changes here. And, and because the HTML shows up, we can now render the application over here. But what's unique about resumability that in this HTML, we sent a really teeny tiny amount of JavaScript, about one kilobyte that, that takes super quick to execute. And that makes it so that this page is now instantly interactive. And the problem is if you interact with the page, you don't actually have a JavaScript. So first of all, the interaction is faster, but we immediately start to download the JavaScript. So that hopefully by the time you are interacting with it, the JavaScript is already downloaded. And so the end result is that you can have a lot faster interactions. Now, 
I know what you're thinking. Well, clearly I've cheated. I made the JavaScript smaller. Where, what is this missing part? Well, this missing part is actually removed because, well, we removed the duplication. Remember how I said that HTML now is in many ways duplicate of the JavaScript? Well, what Resumability allows you to do is essentially remove this duplication. And as a result, the amount of JavaScript you're sending through is much, much smaller. Well, what about the execution of the app and the reconciliation? Well, those particular parts are removed because of resumability. It turns out that even if you wanted to execute the application and do full reconciliation, you couldn't because a huge part of the JavaScript is actually missing. Well, it's missing because it was removed because it was deemed unnecessary because this was already present in the HTML. And so this is the reason why resumability is faster on startup performance. So let's go back to this slide. So here, what are we going to do in the future? I think the future really is about performance. We already have a wonderful DX and we want to keep that DX. We don't want to give up on that, but really want to focus on the performance. And so there are new frameworks out there. One of them is actually Google Wiz that has been around for about 10 years, but it is actually just internal to Google and it runs Google Search, Google Photos, and so on. One of the things about these applications is they're all extremely fast. eBay has a, has a framework called Marco and Marco in their next release version six will have resumability as well. And of course, Builder is working on Quick for with resumability as well. And so the key thing to kind of understand here is that we basically have the same interactivity and, and unified mental model as we had in the previous set setup. But the big difference is that we're no longer running the application twice. The application now runs exactly once, and that is usually on the server, and then we don't have to rerun it again on the client during the startup performance, right? During this phase where we had hydration, the, the hydration caused the application to rerun once it was part of the server as a pre-rendering, and then again as part of the client. This essentially removes it. And so the nice thing about resumability is that the performance scales well. What we mean by that is that it doesn't matter how complicated the page becomes, the startup performance is always the same, which is really nothing, right? The only startup performance that the resumable systems have is the cost of setting up the global listener, which is constant no matter how many components or interactions you have. Hope you found this useful.